It's local edition Brad Pomerantz here in the San Fernando Valley. We are joined today by Mike Antonovich. He is a supervisor in Los Angeles County. I think we're in his district today. He is also a nominee for the California State Senate. I'd like to speak with you, sir, about a state issue to begin, and that deals with parole. Uh, Prop 57 will be on the ballot uh, proposed by Governor Brown, and what it would provide is for nonviolent crimes, those individuals will more easily gain credits towards early release, and it enshrines a constitutional right to parole. What do you make of Prop 57, sir? It's a fraud. Mm. Just as get to the point. <laughs> just to the point. Yeah. Just as AB 109 was going to be the nonviolent, they were going to come back to the communities, to the 58 county jails, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. And then we find out that really wasn't the case. We've had a spike in crime. Just this past year, 170,000 rapists, murderers, assault uh, criminals have been arrested in the state of California. Do we know, though, if there's a causal link between AB 109 and the spike in crime? Because, look, what we do know is that crime's increasing across the country for some odd reason when the economy's getting better. Um, and yet we're trying to figure out, is it AB 109? Is it Prop 47? What's going on? It's AB 109. It's Prop 47. And those are reasons because people who are being released are recommitting the crimes. We have a very high recidivism rate. Uh, under 47, you've had people arrested 33 times right. for the and, same crime. And 47, of course, was the, the initiative that allows for certain felonies to be reclassified as misdemeanors. Misdemeanor. AB 109 sends lo lower level offenders from state prison to county jail. But the lower offenders were for the last arrest, not their previous arrest record. So you can have a person who had been a murderer, a rapist, et cetera, right. but the last offense was for a minor offense. That's what they look at. They don't look at the criminal record when they put them into our communities and neighborhoods. And it's interesting you mention that because under Prop 57, the parole decision is based upon the primary offense. It's not based upon any enhancements. Which means if you use a gun in a commission of a crime, you have an enhancement, more time in jail. 57 is going to eliminate that. What's a little confusing to some, help me out. So whether the ramifications of AB 109 were perceived or not, an argument could be made that Governor, Governor Brown's hands were tied. The U.S. Supreme Court had said that the jails were overcrowded. He needed to do something. Okay, so let's just start with that as, as the basis. But the jail population, the prison population has decreased. Then we add Prop 47, which reclassifies felonies to misdemeanors, so the population is decreasing even further. But what Governor Brown is saying is he needs Prop 40, 57 because he needs to drop the population even further. But aren't we well below what the U.S. Supreme Court said was the overcrowded prison? The problem we have now, we're having overcrowdedness in county jails. Mm and you're having a problem with these individuals recommitting crimes after time after time. And so what the governor has failed to do is to ensure that we had a prison system that met the needs that were required instead of letting the status quo exist. But, and, and I would say the ACLU, whom I like to call the Atheist Criminal oh Liberties Union, oh my. are the ones who prevent and stop the legislation at the state level when it comes to upgrading and modernizing the penitentiary system. So then the court comes in and says, well, you haven't modernized, you haven't provided all the services, so we have to reduce the numbers. That's nonsense. We need to have a strategic plan to ensure that the state penitentiaries are able to protect the public from those criminals and not shift them down to the cities and counties. The flip side though, and you've worked both at the state level and <clears> the county level, if someone is in jail and or prison and their sentence is such that, that they will be getting out at some point, not, you know, in 50 years, criminologists tell us that we need to at least provide them with some type of incentive system so that while they're in jail, they can see that their behavior is such that they can have some time shaved off. 
or, or should we not consider that? Your sentence is your sentence is your sentence. There should be incentives, correct. But just because you do exercise every day should not count as an incentive. You should be using your time for schooling, uh, learning a trade, a skill, but not just pushing weight. But is that what 57 does? Because I had thought that 57 looks at behavior, efforts to rehabilitate, participation in prison education. Help me. Exercise programs. Is that good behavior? Ways. Yeah, yes, yes. So, I mean, it's a flaw. Just as 109, the same man that sold you the fake medicine and 109, support at 47, is now giving you another fake medicine to tell you it's going to cure you. It's not. That's why our crime rate has spiked statewide. Statewide. L.A. County, it has spiked. I, I want to shift gears, if I may, and speak with you about our business environment. Uh, you've been on the Board of Supervisors, and there's ordinances that you can pass to try to make the county more business friendly. But as I understand it, really the regulations that impact businesses most are promulgated in Sacramento. Yes. Is that right, sir? That's correct. You've been in Sacramento. You were state yes. senator. Se assemblyman. Assemblyman. Now you're looking to go back as a senator. So presuming victory, what do you hope to do specifically on the question of regulation? Because while you have some issues with the governor on prison reform, he has said, we need to reform CEQA. It's the Lord's work. You know, some Democratic colleagues say that, but yet we hear people saying it, but we don't see much. We need to reform CEQA. Right now, the fat cats, who, they want to build a football stadium. <laughs> they want to build a high right. rise. They get their CEQA oh, reformed. Yes. Oh, but yes. if you want to build a library like I had been doing or a hospital or other type of programs, you don't have that luxury. You have to go through a very cumbersome process, and that's wrong. It should be fair for everyone, so not help, just the football stadium. So help me. I mean, look, you've worked with Democrats on the Board of Supervisors. Right. You've worked with Democrats in Sacramento. There are plenty, as I understand it, of business-friendly Democrats that want sequel reform. The Democratic governor wants sequel reform. When do we get sequel reform? We've been talking about it for years. Well, the Democrat yeah. governor, Jerry Brown, could have had CEQA reform had he told those people in the state legislature, I'll sign the bill for the football stadium, but yes. it must include hospitals and other projects, not just the special interests benefiting from that. And having a stronger voice of Republicans in the state Senate and the assembly will allow the moderate Democrats to join in these reform efforts. So let's Otherwise, the moderate Democrats are castigated if they don't have that support system that the Republicans can provide so we can change the state mm -hmm. to be business friendly and creating jobs for our people. So let's presume victory. <clears throat> you go to Sacramento. Let's presume the Democrats maintain control. Talk to me about working in a more partisan <clears throat> environment when you've been successful working in a nonpartisan environment here in Los Angeles Just County. Just as the Board of Supervisors, I work with Sheila Kuehl, right. Hilda Solis, uh, Zev, Thomas, Gloria. And right. we have a, uh, our, our budget is, mm -hmm. has, our state ha has a lower bond rating than the county budget mm. than we have. We have a higher bond rating in the state of California. But Sebastian, Mark uh, Ridley Thomas's son, right. Sebastian, uh, it, I can work with Sebastian. We are working together. Uh, Don Burke, uh, Bill Burke's sure. daughter. I love um, that. And Bill He's is a strong a, supporter of Yvonne mine. Yvonne Brathwaite Burke, former and supervisor. And Don, uh, yeah. we can work on a lot of these projects, dealing with mental health, de dealing with education, and dealing with business. These are people who are business friendly and know that strangulation kills jobs for our future. So His that's name. what I would be doing. His name is Mike Antonovich. He is a supervisor in Los Angeles County. He is running to return to Sacramento as a member of the California State Senate. Of course, that election will be held on November 8th. My name is Brad Pomerantz coming to you from the San Fernando Valley on Local Edition.